A decision tree is a hierarchical data structure implementing the divide and conquer strategy. A decision is reached through a number of consecutive queries on the data sample. This is an efficient, non-parametric uh, learning method that can be used both for classification and for regression. In this unit, we discuss learning algorithms that build a tree from a labeled uh, data set, and we discuss how a tree can be converted to a set of simple rules that are easy to understand. I want to start the discussion with an example. Let's say that we have a supervised learning problem where we are given this data set with each data point labeled as either blue or red. We are looking for a simple classification model and obviously there are many options for how to set up a classification model for this data set. But let's say that we are aiming for a non-parametric approach that aims to classify through a number of simple consecutive decisions. And each data point is going to be subjected to a number of decisions and depending on the uh, outcome of these decisions, we are going to label it in the end blue or red. So for this data set, we have each data point as a, um, a two-dimensional uh, point. So we have the x1 and, and x2 dimensions. And so, for example, we could think about the simplest possible decisions we could make. We could compare the x1 dimension of our data points to some threshold value. Let's say this is w1 and just check whether the x1 dimension is smaller or larger than w1. So, in other words, what I'm saying is that we could just take a look whether um, x1 is larger than and w1 and this is going to be our first um, decision to make for our data point. As a result of this um, decision, there are two options. One is Yes, this is true. X1 is in fact uh, larger than, than W1. And the other option is no, this is not true. Uh, and in fact, X1 is smaller than or equal to uh, W1. Now, the point is that if the answer is no, um, so our data point is, is on the left of this um, uh, decision boundary, and on its left, uh, there are no uh, red data points. So already, if the answer is no to this question, we know that, that we deal with a uh, blue uh, sample. So uh, we can already, on this point, we can say we have a decision if the answer was no, and the decision is uh, we have a blue uh, data point. We can then continue and take another look at, at another decision. And for example, we can check this x2 dimension and check whether this x2 dimension is larger than some threshold value w2. And so in the case where the answer to the previous question was yes, we continue our um, uh, decisions to make. And in this case, we are going to look at whether x2 is larger than some threshold value w2. And if the answer um, is yes, so that means that we are um, in the top right corner and in that case we have a decision, this point is a red data point. If the answer was no, then we are in the bottom right corner and in this case we have a decision to make our data point is a blue point. So a decision tree is a hierarchical model for supervised learning whereby the local region is identifying a sequence of recursive splits in a smaller number of steps. A decision tree is composed of internal decision nodes and in our example, so a decision node, um, this would be already the root node, but we had another decision node uh, right here. And we also have terminal leaves.
and we had one here and we had two more right here. Each decision node M um, implements a test function uh, and let me denote this by the FM of X. So this is the, decision, the uh, test function specific to node M and these test functions, they have discrete outcomes. In our example, there were only two outcomes, yes or, or no. Uh, in general, there could be more than two, but there is a discrete number of uh, outcomes for uh, the possible um, answers to this uh, test function. And so given an input at each node, you apply this test function specific to that decision node. And one of the branches is taken depending on the outcome of that test function on your data point. And this process starts at the root and is repeated recursively until you hit a leaf node, at which point the value written in a leaf constitutes the output you give for the point that you are examining. Each test function fm defines a discriminant in the d-dimensional input space, dividing it into smaller regions that are further subdivided as we take a path from, from the root down. Each such test function is a simple function and when written as a tree, a complex function is broken down into a series of simple decisions. Each leaf node has an output label which in the case of classification is the class code and in the regression is a numerical value. A leaf node defines a localized region in the input space where instances falling in this region have the same labels, uh, that's in the case of classification, or very similar numeric outputs in the case of a regression problem. The boundaries of the regions are defined by the discriminants that are coded in the internal nodes on the path from the root to the leaf node. And so with decision trees, we are given the general type of test functions uh, and based on the training data sample, the algorithm is going to build the optimal decision tree, meaning that it's going to select the decision nodes, uh, how many nodes, uh, the specifics of their test functions, and it's also going to choose the leaf nodes and their labels.